Come on, can we give Jesus glory one time in the sanctuary? Come on, let's lift him up. Let's magnify him. Let's glorify him because he alone is worthy. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless God. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Amen. The presence of the Lord. I give honor to God, his son, Jesus, and the precious Holy Spirit. I'm grateful for this opportunity to be in the house of the Lord on tonight and to be with you all. Hey, I honor my wife, Shimon, who's with me. God bless you. And my youngest daughter, Danielle. God bless you. Amen. Those that are some from Ladder Glory that has come tonight as well. We pray, praise God for you coming. Amen. I honor this great man of God. Amen. The set voice of this house who's been declaring and decreeing and speaking and making such an impact in this region. And I'm just grateful that you've opened up your, your pulpit to me and given me the opportunity to minister. So can you help me celebrate Pastor Jason Alvarez? We celebrate you, man of God. And we appreciate your wife as well. Can you help me celebrate the first lady who stands beside him interceding, amen, on behalf of not only the church but your families and the nations. And so we appreciate these women of God. While you're in the clapping mood, can you help me celebrate my friend, my brother, amen, apostle, amen, Cassius Farrell. Hallelujah. Men of God, amen. He's such an inspiration to me, amen. And he just sharpens me in so many different ways. And I appreciate even the times in which we connect, amen. And just, just come and just grab coffee together and just share of what, have, what have we feel the Lord is saying. Um, and just helping one another, praying for one another. And I really appreciate um, his friendship. And his wisdom that he that he gives, amen. I'm able to glean a lot of things from him. And I'm just grateful for the divine connection. And then excited about what God is going to do to all the bishops. And with all the bishop, God bless you. Great to see you again. All the pastors who are here on tonight. We celebrate every five-fold ministry gift. The apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, the teachers, uh, the ministers, the deacons, the trustees, uh, the parking attendants, amen, the ushers. Um, everyone that's somebody in the, the, in the house of God. I think they say Lottie, Dottie, and everybody, amen. God bless all of you, amen. For really, we're, we're, we're only somebody because of that one body amen that gave up his life for us and so we're just glad to be in the number to be in the house of god on tonight i know that what uh pastor for, uh pastor uh jason was saying in regards to this the burden for souls um it's a confirmation of what's been um in my spirit as we've been even declaring since the beginning of this new year uh, that we have to, the body of Christ, our church and churches all over, we have to get back to real evangelism and really going after the lost at any cost. Uh, we think that revival is just a three-night service where we're preaching, running, jumping, and shouting, and we're calling that revival. But real revival is when a whole city begins to repent. And come crying, what must I do to be saved? Real revival is when God concentrates his glory in a certain place to the point that everyone just comes in and says, I don't even know, but I'm guilty. Uh, but I'm guilty of something. I'm guilty. I'm, I, I need him to just forgive me. Uh, and that's what I'm praying and believing God for. And so when he began to talk about this dare to believe God, we released this campaign in our church uh, called Gain, Grasp, and Grow that our focus is to gain people to the kingdom of God, but not just gain them because we got people that come to church, but then they leave the church. And there's a back door that's somewhere open and where churches are hemorrhaging in this season. But I believe that not only we're going to gain souls for the kingdom, but we're gonna get a grasp of them. And we're going to make sure that not only do we grasp them, but they grasp the kingdom principles of God. And then we're going to see tremendous growth, not just in numbers, but spiritually. Somebody just holler, gain, grasp, grow. So when you talked about dare to believe God for the impossible sinner, 
for the impossible loved one that looks like they're not going to get saved, not going to come, not going to come to Christ. I believe that God is able and that the glory of the Lord is going to impact and we're going to see a revival hit your family. I don't know, maybe that was for about eight people in the room, but a revival is getting ready to hit your family. Hallelujah. One of the most difficult places to minister is in your family. Hallelujah. Because they know you, they know all about you, they know the BCU before Christ. Amen. But hallelujah. But I believe your family's getting ready to experience the glory of God. Amen. Let me get to this word. Amen hallelujah i want you to turn to direct your attention with me uh, to first corinthians chapter number 16 verse number nine first corinthians chapter number 16 verse number nine and there you'll find my assignment for tonight amen first corinthians chapter 16 verse number nine and i'll be reading the king james version hallelujah Hallelujah. There's glory in this room. I can feel the presence of God so heavy and so strong in this place. Hallelujah. 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 First Corinthians chapter number 16, verse number nine. I'm reading the King James Version and it reads, For a great door, an effectual door, is open unto me and there are many adversaries i'm going to read that again for a great door is opened unto me and there are many adversaries i just want to talk to you for a few minutes just from two words just use this subject um it's it's a subject two words but it really is a prophetic statement and declaration um, that I believe that needs to remind you of who you are and where you're going. Um, I just want to declare these two words, great doors. Great doors is what I feel rumbling in my spirit. Uh, great doors, great doors, effective doors, effectual doors are getting ready to manifest. Hallelujah. Pray with me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us tonight i thank you for your presence and your power and your glory that we feel in this place tonight god i thank you for speaking to me now speak through me speak lord your servant heareth and he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the church i pray that someone will be encouraged tonight that someone will be edified tonight i pray that someone will be saved set free healed delivered and empowered and tonight father let me preach with power and authority let me speak with simplicity and understanding that everyone that hears this word can apply it to their life and produce fruit that shall remain and this is my prayer in jesus name somebody who loves him shout amen, amen. hallelujah just somebody say great doors great doors as we've entered into 2019 and just finished on today we'll be finishing the first quarter on this last sunday of the month of march many have already begun reflecting and uh, re just re reminiscing and reflecting on the previous year the previous year looking at it in its entirety and trying to analyze and summarize uh, 2018's ups and downs in the successes and failures the victories and the defeats and uh, most people will draw the conclusion using the words of an old uh, book the, the words of the, the Charles Dickens tale of two cities that last year was the best of times and it was the worst of times it was the age of wisdom the age of foolishness Charles Dickens said it was the epoch of belief but it was also the epoch of incredulity. It was a season of light. It was a season of darkness, a, se a spring of hope. It was a winter of despair. We had everything before us, but then had nothing before us. We were going directly to heaven, but yet we're all directly going the other way. Charles Dickens says it was the best of times and the worst of times at the same time. And for most of us, we came into this year with expectation of the miraculous. 
with expectation to believe that this year has got to be better than what I've experienced before. Uh, because before we've experienced a year and witness that God had made promises over our lives, but yet we struggled to fight this good fight of faith to see the promises actually come to pass. Many people in this room have seen a great start of the, the usually the first few months of the year start off great and everyone's excited and moving and, and, and excited about their faith and, and, and in anticipation of great things. But then the momentum begins to go out as you go back to the same old routines you see early in the year God will birth a hunger for his word and a passion for prayer and and only to be seized by situations that cause doubt and unbelief due to the overwhelming trials birth from the cares of this world we've seen people who would lock hands with us and stand in agreement praying that it was gonna be our year of victory only to be hit with the reality a few months later that they were actually praying and the people that you were holding hands with praying for victory were the ones that was praying that it would be your year to fail. We've witnessed new connections and relationships where we finally felt celebrated only to let time reveal that you were only tolerated and now you're aggravated. It's, it was a difficult year and now we're in this moment expecting that something has got to be better the best of times and the worst of times but for someone in this room the whole time God has still been good that 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 regardless of what I may have seen or experienced God brought me through and I survived every plot and every plan of the enemy and every attack that tried to shift my destiny into a downward spiral though I've been hit with the winds and the waves of life hit with violent storms of struggle dark days of dissatisfaction and disappointment moments of uncertainty when facing the unfamiliar somebody in this room can testify that I'm still standing and I still believe God though he slay me yet will I trust him I still believe I don't know maybe it's about a handful of people but I but we still believe that God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that I could ask or think according to the power that worketh in me somebody just take a moment and thank God for surviving another year and with the reflection of the previous year many of us have stepped into 2019 most of you made new year's resolutions <laughs> you said you was turning over a new leaf you said you was going back to the gym and you started off had the momentum you had everything going for you, you was ready to go but now we're getting ready to hit april and the momentum and the motivation seems to be dying down but I felt it walking in this room and I felt it listening to pastor speak. There was an anticipation and an expectation for greater. Uh, and an anticipation for greater. And I believe God is trying to take your faith and take you, your family, to take you from good to great this year. I believe that God is trying to take you into the greater to find out the dimensions of this great I am we preach and teach about and to find out what it really means to hear him say that I am the great I am and, and to hear him declare that greater works than these shall you do. I'm expecting God to do greater. The other day, um, we, we had a discussion in our church. Um, we, were, we were having a conversation um, in our church and we, 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 we echoed some of the conversations um, that you hear in most barbershops and most locker rooms, um, most living rooms and most sports bars. You'll hear the question and they're asking, who is the GOAT? Okay, you, you, you hear them ask the question. Most, most sports enthusiasts know what I'm talking about. The GOAT, GOAT is the acronym meaning the greatest of all time. 
the greatest of all time and you hear them they'll ask the question who is the goat and you'll hear in barbershops you'll hear the great discussion and you'll hear arguments they would elevate their voices and talking about who they believe the greatest is and and those of you who know me and heard me preach for a while somehow a movie always ends up in my sermon pray for me i watch a lot of tv um, um but but if you remember coming to america uh, they had what was called Mighty Sharp, which was the barbershop downstairs that Akeem and Simi, uh, y'all, y'all, y'all know, y'all try to act like you don't know what I'm talking about. The barbershop that they were downstairs and in this barbershop, uh, you walk in and you hear them arguing about who is the greatest. You talking about, they talking about Muhammad Ali and they call him, no, it's Cassius Clay. And there's a big discussion about who it is. He said, his mama named him Clay. I'm going to call him Clay. So you, you, you know the story. So they're arguing who is the greatest? Who's the great? Who's the great? And, and there was, it was depicted in that movie. We, we hear this discussion all the time. Who is the greatest among us? Who is the great? Who is the great? And so, um, but, and, and to understand us moving from good to great, you've got to understand what God means when he's expecting us to move in greatness. He's expecting us to move in greatness. Take our faith to having great faith. Remember when Jesus did miracles and when Jesus walked and Jesus, he, he told the individual, uh, okay, I'll come to your house to heal your son. And he said, you don't have to come to the house. Just speak the word only. If you speak the word only, then I know that he'll be healed. And Jesus' response is, never have I found so great faith in all of Israel. So that lets me know that there are dimensions of faith. There, Jesus, he talks about it. Jesus talks about that there is no faith. Okay, there no, how is it that you have no faith? And then he says, O ye of little faith. Okay, then he goes in another scenario and says great faith. But then the one that would speak and trust the word only, he says, so great faith. I believe God is trying to stretch us into the dimension of the so great the so great faith is the great faith that would stand out on nothing and trust and believe God for the impossible. Hallelujah. So great faith doesn't need support from people, doesn't need agreement from people. So great faith don't need another confirmation. So great faith don't need to fast on this one. I heard in my spirit and I'm just going to take his word for it. So great faith would have you in a boat and get out and start walking and believing that you can walk on water too so great faith will have you come to the tomb and say open up the grave open the tomb and show me where you laid them so great faith would speak to a dead situation and say Lazarus come forth and watch him leaping out the grave so great faith would have you look at storms and winds and waves and say a three word message peace be still and the winds will be slain in the spirit and the waves would say I've fallen and can't get up I'm talking to about so great faith would make you do the impossible so great faith will make you walk in the hospital go down the cancer ward and say be ye made whole y'all not talking to me see a lot of people don't want to hear this they don't want to talk like this because they're struggling with their faith but I'm believing for the day that the glory of God is going to be upon people to do the greater works that Jesus talked about that my shadow is healing people that my tower is healing people and I'm not asking you to buy it for $19.99 I'll just give it to watch someone get delivered and set free God said move from good to great hallelujah you want to see things shift in your house start walking in so great faith you want to see this financial situation change and this stubborn demon leave dare to believe God through so great faith I may not have the money don't know where it's coming from but my daddy is rich and owns a thousand cattle on the hill for the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof I may not have it but my daddy got it so great faith faith somebody shout so great faith so great 
faith so great faith that believes that my whole household can be saved in one day like the jailer that stood outside of Paul and Silas's prison when he was afraid for his life he said this day salvation is coming to your whole house I'm waiting for the day that it's not just the wife that gets saved and the husband staying home watching football but I'm talking the whole family coming up in here saying what must I do to be saved so great faith to believe that God is still healing and God is still delivering that God is still setting free so great faith move from good to great by definition greatness is the quality of being great and great means a degree or an amount or an intensity that is considerably above the normal. By definition, great is a level, an amount, an agree, a degree, an intensity that is considerably, it is obviously, it is way above the normal. Moving to so great faith means you gotta move beyond normal faith. Okay, what is normal faith? God has dealt unto every man a measure of faith every man he didn't say every saved man every Christian man every one of us has a measure of faith I didn't see nobody inspect the chair before you sat down you had faith that it was gonna hold you up <laughs> hallelujah that, that ain't got nothing to do with being saved or not most of you when you were backing out of your driveway put your hand behind the wheel behind the, the seat to put your car in reverse to, and you backed up believing the car was gonna go this way and, unless your car is struggling and you messed up right now but but most of us believe that when I hit reverse I'm going home in reverse most of you locked your doors before you came to church and you have faith that nobody is gonna rob you nobody's coming in and the place is secure God has dealt to every man a measure of faith but then the disciples talked about Lord I believe but help my unbelief another one said increase my faith hallelujah but then he responds and lets us know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God so if I want my faith to increase then I need my word count to increase hallelujah someone who may be struggling with their faith is somebody who struggling with receiving the word oh help me I might get in trouble for this one now but if you're struggling with believing God through faith it could be because you're struggling uh, to tap into what he said through his word because just hearing the word brings faith oh y'all didn't hear me faith comes by just hearing it if I hear it hallelujah something will begin to stir up within me oh you don't believe it y'all remember the woman with the issue of blood hallelujah the scripture says she heard that Jesus was coming by she went to doctors and her situation got worse she went to people and spent money and thought it was going to get better but when she just heard that Jesus is coming by the hearing stirred up something in her to begin to walk in the direction hallelujah of the miraculous I don't know what's going to happen I don't know how it's going to work out he got armor bearers all around him disciples don't want nobody to get close to him I don't know I just got to get close to him uh, because she had so great faith faith that's considerably above the normal above the normal so everybody believes that chairs hold us up everyone believed that the park the reverse the drive would move according to where I put it we believe all of that but when God said I'll supply your need we struggle we're worried Lord what am I gonna do oh, I don't have time but with the, the same way that you believe that the car is going the same way that you'll stand at the bus stop and you'll wait for a bus I don't know when it's coming but I know sooner or later this bus is gonna pull up how is it that you can't believe that God is an on-time God and if he don't hallelujah I need somebody in this room that has faith to believe that God will do exactly what he said he'll do hallelujah I'm talking about so great faith 
Hallelujah. Uh, I'm believing God. Hallelujah. I'm believing God. I'm believing God. I'm believing God. Let me let me hurry up and close this. I'm not even going to get through all my notes. Let me just just stay there here. In the text, here is Paul, who's now um, dealing with his in his ministry. He's going forth. He's on his missionary journeys. He's doing his apostolic work. He's empowering churches, strengthening churches, going through different things. But of course, we know that Paul had a struggle within his ministry. Part of his calling was to know what it is to be persecuted for Christ's sakes. Uh, he said later in one of his teachings, he said that some of the things that I went through is for the furtherance of the gospel. So some of the things that we're going through is for the furtherance of the gospel, to further God's gospel, to further the testimony that you're facing. You're going through it so somebody else don't have to go through it. Or perhaps you're going through it so you can pull somebody else out of it. Because you can be the testimony that I know what it looks like, I know what it feels like to be there. But God, that God would pull me out and the same God that did it for me can do it for you. So, so, so Paul is knowing what it's like, his ministry has been proven by him trusting God through his difficulty and one thing I found that and I mentioned this the other night is that greatness isn't just gotten you don't just get greatness greatness is groomed greatness is not just gotten it is groomed you don't just become great overnight or you don't just become great because you just said you want to be great but there is a process of grooming that gets you to the level of great. When we talk about the discussion of who is the greatest of all time and who is considerably above the average, there's only a certain that enters the conversation. You know that you've reached a superior level of greatness is that what comes out of you, it creates, people don't have to even know your name or know who you are. They can just sense when you walk in the room that there is a level of glory on you. When you've reached a level of greatness, it, it is far above the average. Far above the average. And it reaches to a level that what you do becomes almost synonymous, uh, your, your name becomes almost synonymous with the function. That's how you know you're great. When your name comes almost synonymous with the function that you're called, you're anointed, and you're appointed to do. Okay, let me test it out real quick. Uh, if I ask you, if I just say the name of this sport, I know many people would, be, would associate the name. Michael Jordan. Uh, now I'll flip it. I'll say the sport, you say the name. Boxing. Muhammad Ali. I am the greatest. Okay, depending on whether you on 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 who your favorite is, um, but I, I pretty much know predominantly uh, what this room would say: um, golf. Mm -hmm. Okay, those who know me, I used to play professional soccer. Now my, my kids play soccer, so you know my, my sport. And, and most of you in this room probably don't play, play soccer, but if I, if I say the sport of soccer, who is the GOAT? Now, if I ask anyone in this room who was born after 2000, who was the greatest basketball player, who are they going to say? So greatness is generational. And depending on the person, depending on your perspective would determine who you feel is the great, is the great. So, so, so greatness is, is identified by different eras. So my son's era says LeBron James. My era says Michael Jordan. My father's era says Bill Russell and Will Chamberlain. The truth is, no one would be discussing either of them if they all wasn't great. 
We're just trying to see who is the greatest of all time. But the fact that they're in the discussion, it puts them far superior above everyone else. And I want to know, can God trust you with being in the conversation? Oh God, can you be in the conversation of what a great Christian looks like? Or what a great believer looks like? Or what a great child of God looks like? Can you be in the discussion or do we not even know your name?